Oh, what's up everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today I'm paying tribute and respect to some dead and forgotten video game franchises. Now, some of these don't deserve to lie here. Others, I'll admit, are past their prime and really don't deserve a shot at redemption. But one thing is certain, there are far too many dead, forsaken, or forgotten game franchises in this world. So get your F key ready, maybe a liter of Mountain Dew, and let's jump straight into this. When I say dead, forgotten, or forsaken, it could mean a couple things. Maybe the series hasn't gotten a new entry in several years, or perhaps the latest title was on par with Fallout 76. 16 times the detail. Or maybe these franchises simply turned their backs on what made them so popular and beloved in the first place. In any case, these franchises have seen better days. For one reason or another. So we're gonna run through a bunch of different game series, and I'll tell you why I thought they were awesome or not, and what they could possibly bring back to the video game industry. Let's begin with a series that has layers, Shrek games. With the last entry Shrek Forever After releasing in 2010, is it any wonder why the last 10 years have been so terrible? Just kidding, but not really. Let's begin with a famous duo that's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Ever since Banjo-Tooie released 20 years ago, fans have eagerly awaited a new game that didn't involve fucking cars. After Microsoft's buyout of Rareware in 2002, the once beloved company took a nosedive into irrelevance. These two games were some of the most kick-ass 3D platformers, and seriously gave Mario 64 a run for its money, with amazing level design and iconic soundtrack that I've used in countless videos, and the most carefree, genuine sense of humor. <laughs> The Bear and Bird have been among the most requested characters for Smash, and after 19 years, hope was finally delivered. And you know what? Seeing Banjo-Kazooie in Smash? It's all I needed. I never expected them to get a new game because, let's face it, 3D platformers that don't have Mario in the title are a rare breed nowadays. But in a shocking twist, Steve Mayles, the creator, tweeted this. When we were working on Banjo-Tooie, a certain game was released that involved Nintendo characters duking it out. 20 years later, it could well be the game that saved Banjo-Kazooie. What will next year bring for Baron Bird? Steve, my man, I cannot wait to find out. 2K Games, would you kindly develop a new Bioshock already? A man chooses. A slave obeys. You could argue that Bioshock is not a forgotten franchise, and I'd agree- Shut up, Atlas! I know who you are! And I'd agree with you. Honestly, with Bioshock 2, Infinite, and the Burial at Sea DLC, it feels like the story is pretty much wrapped up. I'm not sure if I'm asking them to dredge up a corpse that gracefully went out on its own terms, but at the same time, Bioshock was such a masterpiece that revolutionized the FPS genre. So why not give it another shot? Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? Remember when Rockstar used to develop video games? I do. The Xbox, GameCube, and PS2 were probably my favorite generation of consoles because there were just so many oddball titles. Nobody gave a fuck and everyone was experimenting. Enter Bully, yet another Rockstar game that allows you to be a total piece of shit and have fun doing it. Bully was a more PG-13 take on the Grand Theft Auto formula, putting you in the shoes of high school douchebag Jimmy. You could ride skateboards, shoot slingshots, get into fist fights. It was filled with juvenile humor and gameplay, but what really sold it was the setting. Bully was so rebellious, man, it was filled with the type of stuff every kid wishes they could do at school. It wasn't as big as GTA, but you'd expect it to have at least one sequel. While there have been rumors of a Bully 2 in development, there's also been news that it's been cancelled in favor of GTA 6, likely to come out when GTA 5 stops making money in the year 2069. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! 
is what must have been said to the Castlevania series because Dracula hasn't been resurrected in quite some time. 2D side-scrollers are not a dead genre by any means. I mean, heck, both indie and AAA studios are still pumping out amazing titles with Shovel Knight, Ori, Raymond Legends, Cuphead, Hollow Knight, the list goes on. It makes you wonder why the gothic king of 2D side-scrollers hasn't dipped its toes into the water. Maybe Simon and Richter's appearance in Smash Bros. will revive the series. Who knows? Just give me Symphony of the Night 2. <laughs> Marvelous. Ah, Conquer. You only had one game, but goddamn, did you leave quite an impact. Disguised as just another kid-friendly 3D platformer, Conquer's Bad Fur Day has earned a well-deserved cult following over the years. Released during the end of the N64's lifespan, and with limited advertising, Conquer never got the chance he really needed. At least Microsoft gave us a kick-ass remake with a full-fledged online multiplayer. Easily one of the funniest games ever made. I mean, who could forget the Great Mighty Pooh and I'm going to throw my shit at you. Conquer the Squirrel is a classic gaming icon in my mind and I find it so amazing that he's as well known as he is with just two games under his belt. Although. Phil Spencer has recently come out and say that a new Conker or Banjo-Kazooie will depend on Rareware, so there is hope for this lovable alcoholic squirrel to get a shot at redemption. I see you, I see little fella. You better get this fat ass bitch off of my back pronto. What would you get if you mixed Gundams with Beyblades? <laughs> Custom Robo, baby. What's this? A series that only had one release outside of Japan? And it was a GameCube exclusive that never re-released on any other platform? You bet your ass it belongs on this list. Custom Robo allowed you to fight and customize robots in an arena battle. It's insanely fun to play with four people, easily one of the most unique fighting games ever made. They had guns that shot out fucking dragons or blasted swords into the sky and the soundtrack full of banging slappers. Custom Robo lived and died in the era of couch co-op games, so I don't have any faith it'll make a return, especially since, you know, 12 people know about it. But I would kill to play a new game like this in some online multiplayer. When video games try to copy other successful formulas, they're usually just cheap imitations. We are concerned that Dead Space may be replicating the experience that Resident Evil 4 is known for. Never let the meme die. Dead Space took the same things that made RE4 so awesome and brought it to space, amplifying the horror aspects and forcing players to use surgical precision when fighting the terrifying necromorphs. The first two games are fantastic iterations on the horror genre, but the third completely derailed the franchise into an action-adventure game with pay-to-win mechanics. Yeah, thanks for that, EA. With Resident Evil still going strong after countless years, you can't help but think if maybe Dead Space could claw its way back and take a bite out of that same pie. I hate you. You're a bad person. Despite releasing two games in the last nine years, Dragon Age fell hard and fast after Origins, devolving into a shitty medieval clone of Mass Effect. Origins was Bioware at their absolute peak, in my opinion. Even if you didn't enjoy the janky combat, the dialogue, story, and companions were so amazing. I've dumped hundreds of hours into Origins and never regret it. Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition, on the other hand, you couldn't pay me to play those games. Origins forced me to make some of the hardest decisions ever in a video game, and when I picked the wrong thing, I felt terrible. There are few titles out there that I have such a deep emotional investment with. While there is a new title set to release in 2022, I have no faith that Bioware is going to be able to capture that same lightning in a bottle that they did with Origins. 
It's time to kick ass and disappoint everyone. And I'm done kicking ass. Would the world be better if Duke Nukem made a return? The answer was no in 2011. Duke Nukem Forever, true to its name, was the most notorious piece of vaporware ever. In development for over a decade, the once iconic badass found his welcome mat covered in shit. Now what? Shit finger painting? To be honest, I don't think the Duke deserves to make a comeback. Forever left such a terrible taste in everyone's mouth, and with the Doom series reclaiming its throne, I can't really think of a reason why he should return. Look, Todd, you've been re-releasing Skyrim for the past nine years, but if you re-release it one more time, then, then we better take a station break. But now I'm announcing a new Skyrim port right here. Well, I think that you, you probably won't announce it again. I bet I do. All right then. Skyrim VR. Okay, so Elder Scrolls isn't quite dead, forgotten, or forsaken, but Jesus Christ, man, nine years since Skyrim came out. As I've talked about before, we're pretty much in that age where game developers are just trying to milk their existing products as much as humanly possible. Of course, Elder Scrolls has gone the same route as KOTOR in that they've been focusing on an MMORPG instead of a mainline single player. Boy, this is going to be a controversial take. Fallout has been all over the place during its tenure, transforming from an isometric RPG to a first-person shooter RPG to yet another Mass Effect clone. And then 76, a title that sits nice and comfortably next to Ride to Hell Retribution. But Fallout strayed from the formula that pretty much everyone loved with New Vegas and 3 in favor of... I, I don't know. Regardless, 76 tarnished Bethesda and the Fallout brand, and they need to figure out what fans want and meet that demand if Fallout is going to have any chance of reversing its status as a laughing stock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great. Ah, F-Zero. One of the few franchises that's had its representative in more Smash games than its own series. Everyone knows who Captain Falcon is. Yes! But probably 1% of those people have ever played an F-Zero game. Captain Falcon was meant to be Nintendo's cool new mascot back in the late 90s, but it never really caught on. F-Zero was this fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping racing series that may not have stood out or caused shockwaves when a new game released, but the series was special because of how it pushed the technology of the time with every new installment. And no, Mario Kart is not a replacement for F-Zero. Its high-speed racing ran at 60 frames per second on the Nintendo 64. <laughs> what? How? At least the series died with honor and grace. Every title is a technological marvel. There's not a single bad F-Zero game out there. So why has this series been forgotten by Nintendo? Well, there's an amazing video by No Strings PRD who essentially says, Nintendo doesn't want to develop games that don't push the boundaries or reinvent the wheel. And since GX was the perfect send-off, they have no reason to make another. But in this humble acting male's opinion, the captain deserves another chance to blow people's minds with ludicrous speed. I've had the same dream every day for the last 10 years. A new gauntlet game. It'll never happen, but everyone who grew up in the 90s and early 2000s knew about Midway Games and must have played one of these arcade machines back in the day. So much fun with four players, a true dungeon crawler with epic bosses and a satisfying grind. This is like playing Bubsy 3D at Barack Obama's house. Gex isn't known for much outside his meme-worthy status nowadays, and truth be told, his jokes are really outdated. Note to self, don't drink tap water at Jerry Garcia's. But the first game was one of the most challenging 2D platformers I've ever played. Is that a reason for him to return? Nope. Gex is best left in the 90s. In the age of skating games, none stood out more than Jet Set Radio Future, boasting one of the dopest soundtracks known to man. 
cell shaded animation, and gameplay that oozed style. Spraying graffiti, sticking it to the man, Jet Set Radio is a true Rebels game. In 2017 though, Sony had expressed interest in a new game, Jet Set Radio Evolution, but Sega turned it down for unknown reasons. The fate of this franchise may not be largely important in the grand scheme of things, but it doesn't look like Sega is going to be breathing life into it anytime soon. You cannot hide from what you once were, Revan. Recognize that you were once the Dark Lord, and know that I have taken your place. Honestly, I could pretty much put every Bioware franchise in this video because they are a shell of their former selves. The first KOTOR was a brilliant masterpiece, one of the GOATs. The second somehow had better writing, gameplay, branching paths, and characters, despite being blatantly unfinished because of its year-long development cycle. That's right, they made KOTOR 2 in one freaking year. Yet for some godforsaken reason, they decided to go the MMORPG route instead of turning the series into a trilogy. KOTOR 2's story left off in a completely ambiguous state. And it's not like Star Wars games don't make money. It's not like people don't know what Knights of the Old Republic is. But Bioware had their chance and they chose something different. They went down the dark path. There's no redemption. The KOTOR 3 I'd want to see? Doubt it will ever be made in my lifetime. Remember when I said, remember when Rockstar used to develop video games? Who could forget L.A. Noir, an absolute slam dunk that pushed the boundaries of technology with every line of dialogue being recorded with motion capture. The visuals are timeless, if a bit hilarious at times. Not the most action-packed Rockstar game, but a humble dive into the detective noir genre that is rarely seen in the world of video games. Again, the story was pretty much wrapped up, but hey, performed really well. Even without the stunning Cole Phelps, I think we'd all love to see Rockstar give this formula another shot. Like Bioware, pretty much every franchise that Valve has made could be in this video too. It's mind-boggling how they released two Left 4 Dead games in back-to-back -back years and have done almost nothing with the franchise since. Far be it from me to criticize Valve's methods of madness, but come on, dude. Left 4 Dead 3 would sell like hotcakes. But hey, if Valve isn't going to do anything with their IPs, at least someone else is willing to try. Back for Blood is a new spiritual successor and is being made by some of the original creators. With similar gameplay, it's looking to be a real treat. I can't wait to sink my hands into some intense 4v4 zombie killing action. Mass Effect, much like Fallout, is coming off a glitchy technical nightmare that spits on the legacy of previous games. See? No reason we can't be civilized. The original trilogy was a masterclass in immersive storytelling, branching paths, likable companions, and solid gameplay. All the Bioware trademarks you expect. It's no wonder why so many other franchises copied the Shepard-esque main character, dialogue wheel, and style of Mass Effect. Like Bioshock, the story is pretty much complete, and Andromeda was nothing more than a lazy cash grab. Waiting for a new Mass Effect? I wouldn't hold your breath. You've heard this story before, an incredible series of games beloved by millions is capped off with the worst entry possible, and it's just left in that state. They played us like a damn fiddle! Metal Gear is the premier stealth series that everyone knows and loves. So it was a real interesting choice that Konami fired Hideo Kojima and made a shitty zombies game instead of working with him. That's why we have Death Stranding, so we're 0 for 2 in that regard. Interesting tidbit I just found, but Sony is looking to buy the rights to Metal Gear, Silent Hill, and Castlevania from Konami. I hope they sell all of them because fuck Konami. The future of Metal Gear depends on those negotiations. But even if Sony doesn't get the rights, Solid Snake had a solid run. Samus has been stuck in a rut for a long time, despite being one of Nintendo's most celebrated IPs. Unlike Castlevania, Metroid kicks ass in both 2D side-scroller and FPS genres. What is there to say about the Prime trilogy that hasn't been said about Bob Ross and Mr. Rogers? Unfortunately, this is one franchise that Nintendo keeps fucking with. Other M was a cringe fest, and aside from the remake of Metroid 2, there hasn't been much to get excited about. So it comes as no surprise that Nintendo has no idea when Prime 4 will come out. A potential 2023 release date? Gonna be a long wait, Metroid fans. 
Paper Mario is the most heartbreaking franchise I'm a fan of. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts may have spat on the series, but that was only one game. Intelligent Systems have basically made Nuts and Bolts 1, 2, and 3. Why are we still here? They just have no concept of why people love the first two games at all. A series that used to be a dynamic turn-based RPG with some of the best writing in the industry has turned into nothing more than paper jokes and gimmicky gameplay. It's so predictable and played out. After Origami King, I have no faith that a good Paper Mario is gonna ever make its way to shelves. Like Squidward, I've laid my hopes and dreams to rest. Hey, Act Man, you played any good puzzle games recently? Fuck no, I haven't, and you know why? Because puzzle games belong on mobile devices. At least that's what we've been led to believe in the last decade. Portal was a home run straight out of left field. The Portal Gun and GLaDOS became gaming icons overnight. Honestly, it can't be that hard to develop a new game. It was a nice change of pace to slow things down and play something that got you to think critically. And we really could use it because puzzle games are a dying breed. But yeah, just, uh, just keep building up that Dota 2 card game. That's what the fans really want. Hey Valve, if you're gonna take Half-Life to VR, um, why not try that with Portal? Speaking of mobile, a lot of these once divine franchises have been relegated to mobile games that nobody shakes two shits at. Remember Prince of Persia? Hot damn, this was like Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed combined. Even got its own film starring Jake Gyllenhaal back in 2010. Older gamers will remember this series as being the precursor to Assassin's Creed, and since that series gets a new release each year, there ain't much room for Prince of Persia. Dear Kathleen Kennedy, Disney, and George Lucas. What happened to Sev? That's all I've wanted to know for the last 15 years, and I ain't gonna read a book to find out. Republic Commando is the most competent Star Wars FPS game, counting single player only. A squad-based shooter that had you whoop some separatist ass with your elite group of commandos. And it ended on a cliffhanger, man. There were rumors of an Imperial Commando game a couple years ago, but I doubt EA will use the rights to Star Wars to invest in something like that. It's ironic. The cancellation of Kojima's Silent Hills in 2015 was a wrench up the butthole for gamers everywhere. This trailer blew people's minds. Silent Hill defined a new generation of horror games, focusing on psychological terror instead of cheap jump scares. It paved the way for games like Amnesia, Bioshock, and Dead Space. Despite its influence, the world has not been kind to this series, and it's a damn shame. While Spyro and Crash Bandicoot both got a remastered trilogy, Crash was the one that made a real comeback in a brand new game aptly titled It's About Time. But the lovable purple dragon could use some attention too. While his games after the first three were a bit shaky, Spyro offers a more lighthearted atmosphere that is sorely missed today. Bring back Spyro. In a market oversaturated with first person shooters, Time Splitters was a breath of fresh air that had players battling across time in the past, present, and future. What a premise! Future Perfect executed this perfectly. Pun intended. With its diverse array of weapons, enemies, and locations, and the series has always been known for its irreverent humor. Time to split! I'll get the next one. So you get to play as a parody of The Rock, for God's sake. They were on crack when they made Future Perfect. It has the most ridiculous lineup of characters ever. Now it appears that co-creator Steve Ellis is currently working quietly on an unannounced Time Splitters product. Hopefully this product is an actual video game because that would be awesome. Beautiful Joe. Last but not least, Beautiful Joe. God damn, these two games were brimming with style and charm. Followed the story of Joe whose girlfriend is captured while watching a movie, and he's thrust into movie land where he becomes a superhero. This was a unique cel-shaded 2D side-scroller for the GameCube, and you could string together the sickest combos, slow down time, reflect bullets, and just whoop some ass. At first glance, Beautiful Joe seems like one of those characters that's trying hard to be cool and fails, but uh-uh. 
This man is a legend. Dare I say it, deserves a spot in Smash. Well, as I pay my respects to many dead, forgotten, or forsaken game franchises, I wonder what the future holds in 2021. Perhaps the new Dragon Age will be a return to form. Back for Blood could revive a genre that Valve didn't care about. And I never thought I'd say it, but there's hope for a new Banjo-Kazooie. But many of these franchises will simply exist where they are now. Some deserve to be laid to rest, and others perish before their time. The game industry is always changing, and it's never too late for an old classic to bring us the joy we experienced so long ago. Now just make one more Conquer game and I can go home, okay? Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did. Let me know your favorite dead, forgotten, or forsaken franchise in the comments below. And subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. Alright everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man, signing out. Peace!